Welcome to our service of For All Souls. Today we pray for our dead. We pray for them, but we not only pray for them, we pray with them, because we remember that they are with God face to face and wait for us on that other shore. We sing together hymn number 379, God is Love. Fountain of light, 
O light of your angels, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, and all the beings of this world, you have created the light of your saints, the bright cloud of witnesses around us. May our souls be your lamps, kindled and illumined by you. May they shine and burn your truth, and never go out in darkness and ashes. May we be your dwelling, shining from you, shining in you. May we shine, and your light never fail. May we worship you always. May we be kindled brightly and never extinguished. Being filled with Christ's splendor, may we shine within, so that the gloom of sin is cleared away, and the light of everlasting life abides within us. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Jesus said to the people, Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Just a few thoughts on this sacred day. I remember years ago now, I had the great privilege to visit Skara Bray uh, in the Orkney Isles in Scotland. And some of you may have heard of Skara Bray. It's uh, one of the oldest um, intact uh, communities um, in the world, certainly in Europe. Uh, dates back, uh, I think, at least six, if not seven thousand years, uh, a Neolithic settlement. Uh, built right next to the ocean. And all the furniture inside, well, what's left is the stone, uh, but you can imagine uh, the uh, furs and uh, the little um, candles or uh, oil lamps that they would have had. It was like a little warren, um, clearly uh, built to protect from the elements. And one of the things that I remember was that um, they would bury their family members underneath the uh, hearth um, of each dwelling. When a person died, they were literally buried under the floor of the place where the rest of the family lived. In our culture, we really don't know what to do with death and grief. We sanitize it. Uh, somebody dies, well, somebody dies often in hospital, and so it's a kind of a pseudo, dying now is sort of a pseudo medical procedure surrounded by experts and um, those in the know and family members, uh, you know, are tolerated, um, but it is really out of their hands. Those who are fortunate to die with the help of hospice have a very different experience, and it is wonderful that hospice is a growing movement um, in our community. But even so, once a person's died, their body is whisked away by the funeral directors and are often embalmed, and um, then families may or may not see the body again. Uh, oftentimes now, a person's body is cremated, and so between the time that they see their loved one and the funeral, they're given a little wooden or maybe plastic box with the remains of that person, and then they're buried somewhere in a designated area, oftentimes out of town or on the edge of town, and that's it. That is it. As I said, as a society, we're not really sure what to do about death, and it is hard for us to uh, hold somebody who is experiencing grief. We kind of expect that they'll go to a, a counseling group or see a therapist or talk with family and friends or cry it out some, and then at some point they will, um, they will move on. They will um, experience closure. Well, those of us who, um, who have gone through losing a loved one, um, know that there is no such thing as closure. It's not as if you forget that person. It's not as if you stop loving that person. That person is still your mother, your father, your wife, your husband, your brother, your sister, 
your child, your aunt, your dear friend. And just because that person is no longer physically in this world, our, our love for them doesn't go away. The church knows this, and that's why we have this tradition of all souls, because the church knows that the, the cord of love is never, breaking, is never broken by life or death, and that we have a need to feel connected with our loved ones and those who um, came before us, uh, but we want to continue to pray for them and feel their presence close to us. And that there is nothing unchristian about that. There is nothing unchristian about grief or about loss or about feeling um, or about feeling the pain of separation. It's not because we don't have enough faith or hope. We are human. Jesus wept, after all, um, at the grave of his friend Lazarus. And so on all saints, on all souls, in a sense, we, um, we rebury our loved ones underneath the hearths of our own homes so that we know that they are close and that they are safe and that their love and their prayers are still very much with us and that their presence in our lives is still active and still strong, that they still give us strength they still give us advice and counsel and that they are with us in this journey. So today, we remember with great love and thankfulness and yes, with great pain and grief, the love of family and friends who've died. And we gather with them around the throne of God and give praise to our eternal Creator and we look forward to the day when God will gather us and we will be reunited with them. In the meantime, we gather at the hearth and join our prayers with those. We turn to page four in our booklets. In thanksgiving for the holy ones of God and our dearly departed, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Abraham and Sarah, our ancestors in faith, journeying into the unknown, yet trusting God's promises. For Moses the lawgiver, and Aaron the priest, who led the people to freedom and the promised land. For Esther and Deborah, saviors of their nation, and for all who dare to act courageously at God's call. For Miriam and Isaiah, John the Baptist, Anne Hutchinson, the prophetess Anna, Martin Luther King Jr. and all the prophets who spoke your truth no matter what the cost, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For blessed Mary, full of grace, called to be the mother of our Lord. For Andrew and John, the first disciples, who left all to follow Jesus. For Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary, first witnesses of the resurrection. And for all who bear witness to Christ. For Peter, Paul, Junia, Lydia, and all the apostles who preached the gospel to Jew and Gentile. For Stephen, Alvin, Petra, Felicity, and the whole army of martyrs who have faced death for the love of Christ. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Augustine, Hilda, and Amy, St. Margaret, Samuel Seabury, and all who have carried the gospel to this and other lands. For Aylred and Bernadette, and for all who live and teach the love of God, for Bridget and Richard Hooker, and for all who reveal to us the depths of God's wisdom, for Benedict, Francis, Claire, Teresa, Bede, and for all who deepen our common life in Christ, for Julian of Norwich, Hildegard, and for all who renew our vision of the mystery of God, 
Let us bless the Lord. The thanks be to the God. For Thomas Cranmer, Martin Luther, Mary Dyer, Catherine Booth, and all who reformed the Church of God. For Phoebe, Dorcas, Thomas More, and all who hold firm to its continuing faith. For all who work to transform the world. For Monica, Elizabeth, and for all who nurture faith at home and family. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the martyrs and peacemakers of our own time, who shine as lights in the darkness. For all the unsung heroes of our faith, whose names are known to God alone. And for all those in our own lives who have brought us to this time and place, and shown to us the way of holiness. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For all our beloved and departed this life, whom we love but see no longer, may light perpetual shine upon them. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray for those who mourn. Comfort them in their sorrow. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill the emptiness in their hearts with the presence of your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Increase their faith and strengthen their hope. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also for ourselves in our pilgrimage through life. Strengthen us and keep us faithful in your service. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill our hearts with the hope for heaven. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you have loved us into being. Hear our cries. Move us from the shadow of death into the light of your love and peace. In the name of Mary's child, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this sacred worship. If there are if you need help or you are experiencing uh, the trauma of loss, please do not hesitate to be in touch with us. We are here to help and support. May God fill our hearts with the hope of heaven. In the name of Mary's child, Jesus our Lord. Amen.